deep within our bodies, inside our cells, there is something that can lead to entirely new drugs in the fight against cancer, one of our most important proteins. Michael Hall and David Sabatini are awarded the 2020 Huerbari Prize and one million US dollars for the discovery of mTOR and its role in the control of cell metabolism and growth. One person who believes in the future significance of this discovery is Mef Nilbert, professor of oncology. The discoveries and also the further work of uh, Michael Hall and David Sabatini has been uh, really fundamental for our understanding of how cells grow and also how they coordinate their nutrients. So in cancer, uh, this is really a key concept for how tumors develop and grow. Cells are the building blocks of all life on Earth. The cell's life cycle consists of its formation, growth, and death. Different cells have different tasks. This can include sending signals between different parts of the body, building new skin, or repairing the body during and after illness. In order to perform these tasks, cells must utilize available nutrients. For a long time, it was believed that this process happened randomly, that the utilization depended simply upon which substances were available. But that is what this year's laureates would prove wrong. Our story begins on a faraway island in the South Pacific Ocean called Rapa Nui, better known as Easter Island. In 1964, a group of Canadian scientists are here to search for new substances with medicinal potential. They find rapamycin, a poison. The poison shows to have an effect on the immune system which is of interest to researchers around the world. One of them is Michael Hall, professor of biochemistry at the University of Basel. He uses rapamycin in his studies of basic functions in yeast cells. In 1991, he publishes his findings, which will change how we look at cells and how they grow. So when Michael Holt first presented these findings, there was some resistance because it challenged the current view at that time of how cells regulate key functions. So I think it was a bit hard for him to get that accepted by the scientific society. While Michael Hall is studying yeast cells, he discovers two new proteins. He names these proteins TOR1 and TOR2, target of rapamycin. These proteins, which are almost identical, appear to control how the cells grow. What was previously considered to be a random process now appears to be controlled by something that works as a project manager inside the cell. TOR detects if suitable nutrients are available and controls what they will be used for. And without this project manager, the cell cannot survive. So TOR is one of the most important proteins in the cells. It's a coordinator. A lot of different signaling pathways and cascades come together around TOR. So you can look upon it sort of as a project leader in the cells that coordinate multiple functions. TOR will prove to have a major impact on reproduction, aging, diseases, and cancer. Thus, in the 90s, the work to try to understand exactly what TOR is controlling and how these processes function begins on a global scale. In the US, we find David Sabatini, professor of biology at MIT, who at the time is working on his PhD at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. He too is captivated by the exotic poison from Easter Island. He discovers the TOR in mammals, the so-called mechanistic target of rapamycin or mTOR. So David Sabatini made this discovery of mTOR, which is like a little small dot he saw on a silver stain gel when he was in Baltimore. And I wonder at that time during this discovery whether he actually could imagine that it would really be such a major thing uh, for oncologists all over the world. David Sabatini describes how mTOR senses the availability of cellular building blocks with the help of many other factors, 
and then tells the cell to make new proteins, ribosomes, and fats, among other things. Because of this, we now know how mTOR controls the energy production in the cell and the utilization of nutrients. All of this takes place in a complicated network of different processes with mTOR at the center. In several forms of cancer, it has been shown that mTOR becomes overactive, stimulating the growth of cancer cells. Today, hundreds of studies are underway around the world with the goal of transforming this discovery and the understanding of the function of mTOR into actual drugs. Here at Skåne University Hospital in Lund, Anna Canero is involved in clinical trials. The discovery of the mTOR pathway and network was a major breakthrough in the understanding of cancer and led to the development of new drugs. Some of them have been approved for use in the clinic but many more are under development and are being tested within clinical trials in combination with other drugs. The discovery of mTOR has revolutionized our understanding of our cells' growth processes. The work of Michael Hall and David Sabatini has created a foundation for researchers all over the world to be able to develop new treatments for cancer. There's a lot of work that remains to be done, although I have to say that the, the discovery of such a basic mechanism in the cell, I think would be fundamental to how we think about and develop drugs for the future, to target these different pathways, to find out resistance and to, um, to cure more cancers. It was actually quite funny because I was in Cologne, Germany, and I had called an Uber to to go to the restaurant. And I got this call on my phone and I said, is this the Uber driver? And no, there was a Swedish accent and said, no, we're calling from the, the Royal Academy. And so it, it was it was quite funny as a, a completely unexpected, I have to say. Needless to say, I was very happy. I was, uh, in addition to being surprised and I was, uh, I also felt very honored. And I think in the case of this prize, the fact that, that a lot of it, at least the, the monetary part, is for the lab and helps enable new researches. So it's, it's wonderful in all regards. Well, it's already been a dream uh, come true right now. I'm so far to, to, to know how to top, them, top this. I mean, when you get a prize such as this one, it's a, that's really a dream in itself. I think in 20 years, it would be nice to see a time where we can treat and cure cancer. The Hörberg Prize is awarded by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and funded by the Hörberg Foundation. <laughs>